All right, here I've got an example of a, let's see if I can bring this back. Yeah. Some, some ramp. It's got a top of wall elevation here. We got a elevation at the top of the ramp. Elevation at the bottom ramp over here. And an elevation there. We don't know what this one is, so we gotta calculate it. So we know it's 5% at 10 feet, 10% at 15, and so on. What we need to do is find out what's the elevation to this point. We're gonna fill that in right there. Elevation of that point, elevation of this one, elevation of that one, all right? So to do that, we know 5% at 10 feet. The, the math is shown right here. Let me make that a little larger. So 5% at 10 feet, you're going to multiply 0 0.05, which is 5% times 10, and you'll end up with 0.5. So then we're going to take 372, 372, 0 0.00 minus 0 0.5, and we're going to end up with equals 371.5. So that's our that's how we calculate that elevation right there. T three seventy one point five. And then we're gonna do ten percent times fifteen. So if you just move the decimal place one point, we end up with one point five. So 371.5 minus 1.5 is 370. T 370.00. We know this one now. And then we're going to do 50 feet times 12 and a half percent. So uh, the 100 feet would be 12 and a half. That means 50 feet will be six and a quarter. So 370 minus 6 and a quarter be 363.5, or 363.75, T363.75, and then uh, let's just do the math on that tools calculator, 0.125 times, 50, enter, enter is uh, 6.25, and then 370 minus, enter, 363.75, that's good, and then uh, this one here is 25%, I mean 25 feet at 15%, so 15% 15 of 100 would be 15, seven and a half, three and three quarters. So 360, T360, point zero zero. Feet. All right, so now we have that, and then we can close out. We know that we got 360, so tools, 360. 360 minus 372 equals so 12 feet from there, right? Uh, you know, but that's kind of a misnew. Normally, we'd have to have some sort of elevation benchmark here, uh, and that's what I would do. So let's just do this and V. So I'd be setting up my instrument if this was accessible. Uh, probably having a benchmark that's up here, 372, it'd probably go for like 374. So, V, H, enter. I'd be putting it like right there. One, two, insert. And then uh, I'd be able to
potential R, I would be able to measure down from that. So it'd be 372, uh, and then I would have that elevation. So that actually, I, this would be like what you put on your paperwork, just 360, 360's numbers here that you figured out. And then you're gonna have your elevation, T374. Sometimes it just does a 374.00. And then you're gonna put that right there on that benchmark. That's a new like benchmark elevation line. And then you know you'd shoot it uh, as low as you can because you're going downhill. Typically you're gonna be laying this out. This is gonna be full and you're excavating down to this grade and then probably less a little more for the subgrade. But I'm just showing you how to get the elevations. Then when you go here, you know, 360. So what you're looking for is three, so, the number that you want, you're going to subtract that number from this elevation, right? So you're going to go 363.75 minus 374. That's our benchmark, and you're going to get this dimension right here, and then equals, and it'll tell you negative 10.25. So T right here, we're going to go E and then a 4. I don't think that's actually the line then. Enter. Yeah, there's a line there. Got this. 10.25. What that does is gives you the the direction too. So we did a tool. Let's go back to the calculator. We're looking for 363.75 minus. 374 enter and it's negative 10.25 so it tells you from your benchmark elevation there that you're going down negative 10.25 and then the same thing would go here you've got uh, 370 370 minus 374 enter and we know we're going down four feet f4 there you go four feet and it's telling you from that benchmark you're going to go down four feet that's why i do it and then uh let's say the last one here 374 360 minus 374 is negative 14 feet and then you go on that grid line and f4 sometimes it does not want to work man Sometimes you leave this program on for a while and the F4 doesn't work. So we got 14 feet there. And that's how it goes. And then, like I said, if you do the number that you want, subtract it from the elevation, it always tells you whether you're going up or down with a positive or negative number. Then we have, a, we know we're going down 35 feet. And we have 360, 360, so we know that we're going to have uh, 17 feet right here, right? It's a simple math. Or, I'm sorry, 22. Point. All right, 23 feet. So we're gonna go 360. 360, uh, the number that we're looking for is right here, right? So we're gonna be, doesn't really matter, so you're not, you're just getting the difference. So it's 360 minus 337, enter. It tells you it's 23 feet. Twenty-three feet, and then uh, start. Get, so we need to run this one, and then let's say there's no way to get down here. Uh, you're gonna just you've already got this one, and you got this one. You're just gonna connect it with the string line, and you're gonna find out what the slope is. So you're gonna go 360, 360 minus 337, which is 23, right? Uh, so we got 23. And we know that this distance here is 100 feet. So we're going to take 100 and, and 23, and we're going to find the diagonal. So we're going to go File, Start Tools, Calculator. We're going to type in square root of 23 squared plus 
100 squared, close parentheses. Then we're going to hit compute. It's going to give us 102.6109, right? So then what happens when you're done with all this, you just want to measure the diagonal and make sure that it matches 100.44. Oh, oh, let's say we got a bus, but it's just an AutoCAD thing. 102.61, so that matches our, our, our diagonal distance. So that's how you close that out. And then, you know, obviously it's 100 feet, 23 feet. This would be 23% T23. Right there. Bigger. Did it again, didn't it? That's how the, you go 23%, but you need to check that somehow. And that's how you're going to check it if you can't measure the horizontal and the vertical. But you know the theoretical numbers there. That's how you close out. You can make sure that you're... Uh... And then you could also go 23, 23, 23 times 100 equals 8.23 equals 23%. So that's how you know that's that 23%. Uh, yeah, that's it. 23 divided by 123. Check your diagonal, because there's going to be really no way other than having theoretical numbers that are closing out to, you know, that you get the number of 23. So you want to make sure that that 23 matches your diagonal. That's how you do a pretty standard just little ramp situation. I don't know that that's a practical example, but it's giving you some of the um, means as how to get the information. So and then, then, like I said, I always take the number that I'm looking for, that I'm trying to get, I subtract it from the elevation, and then it'll tell me whether I'm going down or up with a positive or negative result. I hope that helps in your career and, you know, learn that and share it with uh, the people that are coming into the trade. Appreciate that. Have a great day and thanks for watching.